If you want to buy a business, watch this video. These are the five things you need to prove that will materially enhance the probability that you'll get the business you're looking to buy. So we're talking to hundreds of buyers every single week who want to buy different businesses who are in the process of buying businesses who ultimately do buy businesses, whether from us or somebody else. And these are the five key things that in all of these conversations that we're trying to tick the boxes for to prove the veracity of the buyer, to make sure they know what they're doing, they have the experience and they have the capabilities to actually pull through and buy the business that they might be looking at. And so the first of these is to have real interest. Right? There's a lot of dabblers in the world of buying businesses, similar to the world of buying real estate or buying anything else. And it is very arrogant to think that 10% of a dabbler's time is going to be better or more effective or more efficacious, efficient than 100% of someone who's obsessed with it. So if you're going to buy a business, be obsessed with it and be able to communicate that, be able to transfer that same level of obsession of, yes, this is why I'm interested. This is the background. This is what I'm looking to do. This is why this is for me, right? And obviously there's businesses that are in the business every day. These are not the dabblers, obviously private equity firms, family offices, large strategics. All they do in many of these firms is buy businesses with the strategics. They have departments that all they do is buy businesses. And so if you are seeking to buy a business as a search fund, independent sponsor, fund list sponsor, I know worth individual, whatever the case may be, you and a bunch of investors, entrepreneurs, anyone trying to buy a business, you need to communicate that the interest level is on par with the people that do this all day, every day. Second is have real experience. And so it's wonderful if you said, hi, I'd like to buy this software company. I just sold a software company that does the same thing. It'd be wonderful if you said, I want to buy this niche manufacturing, this B2B services company, because I just sold something that does the same thing, because I own other things that do the same things, because I've worked 20 years in a business doing the other thing. But people say, well, Arthur, I don't have specific experience in buying businesses. I don't have specific experiences in running the same exact type of business. Find something similar. There is always something similar. Have you had a job before? Great. Well, business is a bunch of jobs. So explain how you've done things that have correlated. If you haven't been in the particular industry, have you had exposure experience to similar industries? Just try to prove, again, building off the initial interest, why your experience is relevant, why it sets you up to be capable to run a business. And some people will say, well, if I buy the business, who cares what I do with it after the fact? But it's not oftentimes true, particularly in the lower middle market that we're in involved with the one to $10 million EBITDA company, they are oftentimes owned by the founders, by the families, by the entrepreneurs, by the small groups of investors, and nobody wants to see their life's work go down the drain shortly after they sell it, no matter how much money they give. Next, have real capital. Now, private equity firms, strategics, committed capital with check writing ability, oftentimes need an investment committee approval. However, very fast, efficient, effective process. Remember, these are machines that they have built purely for the purpose of acquiring businesses that meet their fundamentals, access, capabilities, targets. So if you are to compete with them, you need to have the capital side down pack. Now again, it doesn't mean you have to have X million dollars in the bank that you can write a check immediately. That certainly helps. However, have the pieces put together already. If you are contemplating buying a business for $10 million and you contemplate it's going to be a $4 million equity check and a $6 million loan, if you show up with your offer and say, I already have a bank loan committed, SBA loan, whatever it may be, and I have investors that have committed to the $4 million, therefore pending some preliminary diligence and perhaps an approval by an investment committee or whoever it may be, you need Need to show how this path is actionable you need to show how the pain to getting to the deal in your situation is not materially different than the pain with going with someone who does this all day because remember any seller is going to say well private equity does this all day they know what they're doing they know how this works the biggest fear and the biggest problem that most investment banks m a advisors run into is that they get deals signed up to lois that do not close and so in our firm we pride ourselves on being very 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 meticulous of getting to the lois and very rarely does an loi fall apart before closing we want to get to lois and be almost 100 percent assured that we are going to get a closing and therefore the capital which aligns with the capability of the buyer, not just from can they run the business, but can they actually put the deal together, needs to be pretty ironclad at that juncture. We need to have high confidence that there's capital committed, whether it's debt equity, whatever the complexion is, know that story and be able to communicate it very, very clearly. Next, have a strategy. So we always say strategy and thesis. Strategy is micro, thesis is macro. Strategy is when you buy the business, what are you going to do to A, get up to speed, B, keep things moving in the right direction, and C, grow it in the future. Again, if you have that strategy down, oh, well, when I've been involved historically in software companies, I would come in, we would buy it, we would figure out the highest ROI 
sales tactic that we've been using and we accelerate that we go through the operating expenses and we cut the fat where we can we really optimize the businesses that's a good strategy it doesn't need to be pinpoint you don't have to have every single thing figured out but have a general idea if someone just says oh yeah you know it's an interesting thing I, i'm gonna buy it and, and, and see how it goes it does not instill a great deal of confidence that there's a a level of commitment to get the deal done and b certainly to continue the success of the business post-transaction. And lastly, this goes to the macro, have a thesis. You say, okay, there's interest, there's experience. Capital seems like it's tied together. They have a strategy of what they would do with the business. What is the longer term? And this kind of builds off what are the growth strategies for the business? There's usually a thesis. If somebody said, we want to be in the medical oriented software field because we think that there's just going to be ongoing aggregations with the Athena Health and people like that buying well put together aggregations of software companies, that makes good sense. If we said, well, we want to be in the pharmaceutical supplies distribution chain because we see the ongoing the disaggregation of pharmaceutical development due to the fact that there are lower batches of immunotherapies versus kind of the older larger batch types of drugs that's a thesis so have that being said because that ties everything together it effectively answers the question of why do you really want to do this and if you have that long-term thesis it instills confidence that you will do the things necessary to see it through and effectuate the plan and so we'll walk through these again quickly have a real interest, have real experience, have real capital, have a real strategy, have a real thesis. What is the recurring theme? Be real. The number one question a seller will ask when we are updating them as to the status of the different conversations and who the parties are that are interested is, are these people real? And with these five boxes ticked, we can typically substantiate it or disprove it. And that's why we focus on them. Put yourself in the seller's shoes. Think of the questions you would ask if someone was trying to buy your company. Why do you want to buy it? Do you actually know what you're doing here? Do you have the capital? What's your strategy? Answer all of those questions in the five items we discussed here. And you will instill a great deal of confidence, which will engender goodwill in the dialogue, which will engender some patience along the process that will allow you to compete with private equity firms, the large strategics, etc. And so that's a thought for today. If you want to buy a business, make sure you have these five prongs nailed down. Hope the week's off to a good start for everyone. Keep pushing forward. God bless. See you next time.